So today we are going to be reading out of Deuteronomy 1 through 3, so let's get started. These are the words which Moses spoke to all of Israel across the Jordan into the wilderness in the Arabah opposite Suf between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazareth and Dizahab. It is seven days' journey from Horeb to the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. In the fourteenth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had commanded him to give them. After he had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and Adrai. Across the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to expound this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, and saying to you, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and set your journey, and go to the hill country of the Amorites, and to all their neighbors in Arabah, in the hill country, and in the lowland in the Negev and by the seacoast, the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have placed the land before you. Go in and possess the land, which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to them, to their descendants forever. I spoke to you at this time, saying, I am not able to bear the burden of you alone. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are this day like the stars of heaven in number. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousandfold more than you are and bless you, just as he has promised you. How can I alone bear the load and burden of you and your strife? Choose wise and discerning and experienced men from your tribes. I will appoint them as your heads. You answered me and said, The thing which you have said to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and experienced men, and appointed them heads over you, leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the cases between your fellow countrymen, and judge righteously between a man and his fellow countrymen, or the alien who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not fear man, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. I command you at this time all things that you should do. Then we set out from Horeb and went through all the the terrible and great wilderness which you saw on the way, the hill country of the Amorites, just as the Lord our God had commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea and said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord your God is about to give us. See, the Lord your God has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord the God your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you approached me and said, Let us send men before us that we may search out the land and bring back to us word of the way by which we should go up and the cities which we shall enter. The thing pleased me, and I took twelve of your men, one man from each tribe. They turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eskal and spied it out. Then they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us, and they brought us back a report and said, It is a good land which the Lord God is about to give us. Yet you were not willing to go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you grumbled in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us, he brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorite to destroy us. Where can we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying the people are bigger and taller than we. The cities are large and fortified to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of the Anakim there. Then I said to you, Do not be shocked, nor fear them. The Lord your God who goes before you himself fight on your behalf, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord God carried you, just as a man carries his son in all the way which you have walked until you came to this place. But for all this you did not trust the Lord your God, who goes before you on your way to seek out a place for you to encamp in fire by night and a cloud by day, to show you the way in which you should go. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words, and he was angry and took an oath, saying, Not one of these men, this evil generation, shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and he shall see it. To him and to his sons I will give the land on which he has set foot, because he has followed the Lord fully. The Lord was angry with me also on your account, saying, Not even you shall enter there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter there. Encourage him, for he will cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, 
who you said would become a prey, and your sons, who this day have no knowledge of the good or evil, shall enter there, and I will give it to them. They shall possess it. But as for you, turn around and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then you said to me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will indeed go up and fight, just as the Lord God commanded us. And every man of you girded up his weapons of war and regarded it as easy to go up into the hill country. And the Lord said to me, Say unto them, Do not go up nor fight, for I am not among you. Otherwise you will be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, but you would not listen. Instead you rebelled against the command of the Lord and acted presumptuously and went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country came against you and chased you as bees do and crushed you from Seir to Hormah. Then you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord did not listen to your voice nor give you ear. So you remained in Kadesh many days and days that you spent there. Then we turned and set out for the wilderness by way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and circled Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north and command the people, saying, You will pass through the territory of your brothers, the sons of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, even as little as a footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money, so that you may eat, and you shall also purchase water from them with money, so that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known your wanderings through his great wilderness. These forty years the Lord God has been with you. You have not lacked a thing. So we passed beyond our brothers, the sons of Esau, who live in Seir, away from the Arabah road, away from Elath, and from Ezion Geber, and we turned and passed through the way of the wilderness of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab, nor provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given it to Ar as the sons of Lot as a possession. The, the Emim lived there formerly as a great people, numerous and tall as the Anakim. Like the Anakim, they are also regarded as Rephaim, but the Moabites call them Emim. The Horites formerly lived in Seir, but the sons of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did to the land of their possession which the Lord had given them. Now arise and cross over the brook Zered yourself. So we crossed over the brook Zered. Now the time that it took for us to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over to the brook Zerad was 38 years until all of the generation of the men of war perished from within the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them. Moreover, the hand of the Lord was against them and destroyed them from within the camp until they all perished. So it came about when all of the men of war had finally perished from among the people that the Lord spoke to me, saying, Today you shall cross over Ar, the border of Moab. When you come opposite the sons of Ammon, do not harass them nor provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land of the sons of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to sons of Lot as a possession. It is also regarded as the land of Rephaim, for Rephaim formerly lived in it, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumin, a people as great, numerous, and as tall as the Anakim, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and he dispossessed them and settled in their place, just as he did for the sons of Esau who live in Seir. When he destroyed the Horites from before them, they dispossessed the land and settled in their place even to this day. And the Avim, who lived in villages as for Gaza, and the Kaftorim, who came from Kaftor, destroyed them and lived in their place. Arise, set out, and pass through the valley of Arnon. Look, I have given Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and, he, and his land into your hand. Begin to take possession and contend with him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the peoples everywhere under the heavens, who when they hear the report of you will tremble in anguish because of you. So I sent messengers from the wilderness, the wilderness of Kedemoth and Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land. I will travel only on the highway. I will not turn aside to the right or to the left. You will send me food for money so that I may eat. Give me water for money so that I may drink. Only let me pass through on foot. Just as the sons of Esau who lived in Seir and the Moabites who live in Ar did for me. 
until I cross over the Jordan into the land which the Lord our God is giving to us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, was not willing for us to pass through his land. For the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart abstinent in order to deliver him into your land as he is today. The Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his land over to you. Begin to occupy that you may possess his land. Then Sihon, with all of his people, came out to meet us in a battle at Jahaz. The Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we defeated him with sons and all of his people. So we captured all of his cities at that time and utterly destroyed them, men, women, children of every city. We left no survivor. We took only the animals as our booty and the spoil of the cities which we had captured. From Oror, which is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, and from the city which is in the valley, even to Gilead, there was no city that was too high for us. The Lord our God delivered all over to us. Only you did not go near to the land of the sons of Ammon and along the river Jabbok to the cities of the hill country and wherever the Lord your God had commanded us. Then we turned and went up the road of Bashan and Og king of Bashan with all his people came out to meet us in battle at Drea. At Edria. But the Lord said to me, Do not fear him. For I deliver him in all of his people and his land into your hand, and you shall do to him just as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered Og also, king of Bashan, with all his people into our land, and we smote them until no survivor was left. We captured all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them, sixty cities, all the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities, all these were cities fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many unwalled towns. We utterly destroyed them as we did Sihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, the women, and the children of every city. But all the animals and the spoil of the cities we took as our booty. Thus we took the land at that time from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were, who were beyond the Jordan from the valley of Arnon to, Mar Her to Mount Hermon. Sidonians call Hermon Syrian, and Amorites call it Sinir. All cities of the plateau, and all Gilead, and all Bashan, as far as Siliak, Ha, and Edre, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. Behold, his bedstead was of iron, uh, was of an iron bedstead. It is Rabbah of the sons of Ammon. Its length was nine cubits and its width four cubits by ordinary cubit. So we took possession of this land at that time from Orer, which is by the valley of Arnon, and half the hill country of Gilead and its cities I gave to the Reubenites and the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan the kingdom of Og I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob concerning all Bashan. It is called the land of Rephaim. Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob as far as the border of the Jezurites and the Maakithites, and it is, that is, Bashan after his own name, Havav, Hav, Havath Jair, as it is to this day, to Machir I gave Gilead, to the Reubenites and to the Gadites I gave from Gilead even as far as the valley of Arnon, the middle of the valley as a border, and as far as the river Jabbok, the border of the sons of Ammon. The Arabah also with the Jordan as a border from Chinnereth from even as far as the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea and the foot of the slopes of Pisgah on the east. Then I commanded you at this time, saying, The Lord your God has given you this land to possess it. All you valiant men shall cross over, armed before your brothers, the sons of Israel. But your wives and your little ones and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall remain in your cities which I have given you, until the Lord gives rest to your fellow countrymen as, you, as to you, and they also possess the land which the Lord your God will give them beyond the Jordan. Then you may return every man to his possession which I have given you. I command Joshua at this time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done to those two kings 
so the Lord shall do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross. Do not fear them, for the Lord your God is the one fighting for you. I also pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan and that good hill country and Lebanon. But God was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. And the Lord said to me, Enough, speak to me no more of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift your eyes to the west, to the north, the south, and the east, and see it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go across at the head of his people, of this people, and he will give them as an inheritance the land which you see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peor. I hope this was a blessing to you. Hello, my friend, and welcome to Fear Into Faith Global Bible Revival, where we're on a mission to get a million people to read the Word of God cover to cover in a year. I'm your host, Summer Day, and with me today in the studio is Lorena McCoy. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get that right? Yes. Fabulous. We're so glad to have you here, Q. Thanks for being here. Where are you from? I'm actually currently from San Diego, California. San Diego, California. Romina specifically. Yeah, and you just finished filming your portion of the show. And what was that like for you? It was actually really good. They were, they were great uh, Bible uh, passages for me. They very spoke to me. A lot of the words that the Lord gave me personally came from those. So it was very nice. Beautiful, yeah. because you didn't pick what you were going to read. No, I did not. No, I did not. You're not the first person to sit in that chair that actually has said... Yeah. The Lord blessed them with the scripture. Exactly. Choices. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Lord, I, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> I love it. Were yeah. you nervous at all? Or? Um, I was really surprised that I wasn't because this is the very first time I've ever done anything like that. So I was like, why am I not nervous now? Some, something should be poking me right about now. But, um, and of course, as it gets a little bit closer, you get start getting the hots and the sweats and stuff like that. So, but you know, how like, it more is. powder, exactly. A little more here, a little more here. Yeah, I love it. But it's been, it's been a great, it really has. Thank you. Well, you're from California. Yeah. Flew on over here to get recorded. Yeah. What made you say yes to this project? Well, I heard it through my sister, Julie. Okay. And, um, Whenever she said it, I saw a vision of me there, and I did not know anything about it. And, and you know, as soon as you hear my story, you'll, you'll understand. I hadn't been anywhere, and he's had me kind of hidden, locked away, I guess you could say. But um, I was like, okay, Lord, because there there, there's no reason why I should be here, you know, with the, the financial situation and everything like that. He just provided everything. And the next thing you know, Julie says, well, you know, I talked to um, Jackie, and, and she really wants you to come. And and I was like, really? I was like, okay, let's do this. And I, I kind of got into prayer with the Lord. And I was like, you know, it, I've heard from my sister all the time, your bill, your will, your bill, you know? And so he worked. Wait, hold on. You got to slow down because that yeah. was good. <laughs> or will your bill. Yeah. And so my sister, she says that a lot. So I was like, well, you know, my sister, your will, your bill. <laughs> and uh, and it just came about to where everything just fell into place, even a including a place to stay. Wow. And I was like, let's do this. You know, I'm I'm all for it. So so you said yes, not knowing if you'd have finances to not knowing anything, take care of anything, not knowing anything. Blind faith. You yes, know, I, I love walking like that. You know, if if any if I don't if I know about it, it's going to be boring to me. So I want to know nothing. I want exciting all the way. And so he, this was perfect. So, so we still don't know we're going to be here for a week, and this is just the first show. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, gosh, I love it. Yeah, so great. you're like, uh, 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 Jesus take the wheel is exciting. Big for time. You. Big time. He has to slap me away every now and then. <laughs> it's exciting. He always takes me on a good ride. So, so good. So yeah. as soon as you heard about the project, you, you saw yourself. I saw there. myself with, I didn't know if I was going to be in the project or be with my sister just yeah. as support. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, and especially when I got my scriptures, I was like, wow, okay. I, now I know. And <laughs> now I know this is you. So. Let's do it. It's been it's been a really good experience. And I know a lot of the scriptures are based on 
where we at in the filming process. What have we recorded so far? Because, you know, we have to make sure that we get Genesis done before other things. Exactly. And I even asked uh, the lady that we were staying with, Jackie, I says, how did they pick the scriptures? Because I was wondering, you know, are they going to allow me to read this? Because the times and stuff like that are kind of really sensitive right now, according to the scriptures I've been reading. So it's kind of like, okay, Lord, let's do this. You know, I'm I'm up for a good challenge, you know, so. I love it. I love it. And, and, And now here you are. You're here with us. I'm here. And I love it because I don't really know much about you at all. <laughs> and so I always love asking people just like their God journey. I love finding out, you know, what's been in your past, where you raised in the church, any of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, like the story behind how did you end up in this That's chair, right? right? right. So right. let's go back. Were you raised in the church? Well, um, not necessarily raised completely in a church, but okay. when I was... Um, Probably in my teens, I believe my mom uh, received the Lord, mm-hmm. and um, she has a quite an incredible story as well. But I didn't have like one of those boom moments that that I had received the Lord. I had I had I remember even as a really young child always talking to God. He was always my daddy. Mm-hmm. I always spent a lot of time alone, um, just even based on our you know our, our growing up situations and stuff like that. But I can always remember t- talking to him, and then. What was really cool is my oldest sister, Merlene, she was going to church at the time. None of my family was saved, and I was seven years old. And, and how many, so you have another sister. How many siblings? Do I you have, have uh, one older sister, and then Julie is my younger sister, and then my brother, Arthur, and then my mom and dad. So um, my eldest sister, Merlene, she was going to church at the time, and I was, you know, oblivious to anything in life. I was seven years old. Yeah. And so she said, I want to take you to church. You know, ask my mom and dad, I want to take you to church. And so I went to church and there was a little old lady sitting next to us. And I was just fiddling around probably with the, the hymn books and stuff like that. And she brought me, you know, close to her and she just started praying, praying with me. And then all right there, she, I received the Holy Spirit right there. Come on. In tongues and everything. Yes! I was seven years old. I right? love it. And my, and even at that time at seven years old, my mind was like, God is no longer, he's like, in my face he's like right here and so and that's a really special time but when I went home this is the funny part is I told my dad I was excited I told my dad all about it hold on I don't want you to just win (laughs) I know right you're getting teary-eyed I want to I want to stay there well I want to say so. Yeah. So this this little old lady you said. Yeah. She did. Just, she just kind of start talking to you. She just then, from what I would lead you to praying in tongues, or just Holy Spirit came upon you and it popped she, out. She just she led me. She was just you know, I, and I can almost clear, clearly hear say you know, hey, do you, you know I'm gonna you're gonna receive the Holy Spirit, and that's just just those words right there. And her little hands, just little was <laughs> holding my teeny tiny hands, and I was just like you know, she was started praying, and then she kind of led into the the speaking in tongues what yeah. i can remember and yeah. this was when i was seven years old yeah and and the lord keeps continuing to take me back there throughout my life yeah. but um and i would i i was praying in the spirit and everything like that and and i believe i actually fell down as a seven year old wow and uh yeah so um okay i have to tell you, so you you don't know anything about me either i have a seven-year-old oh really and maybe a month and a half ago my seven-year-old came up to me and she asked me if I prayed in tongues. Really? I got convicted immediately because I do, but it's always been more of a secret place thing yeah, for me. Yeah. And I thought, I can't believe my seven-year-old doesn't know I do that. And I said, I do. Wow. And she wanted me to pray with her in tongues. That is so we did. And I said, do you want to pray in tongues? And she said, yeah. Wow. We started praying in tongues and just wow. within a second, she started doing it. That's and then she prayed for people at our event recently and told me, Mom, I was praying for people in tongues. And then we just had a Zoom call the other day wow. where, um, let me back up, at our event, we had a lady who was healing people. We had like 50 plus people healed at our event. And she brought children on stage to lay hands on people. She brought my daughter on stage. And so a week later we're on a Zoom call and a lady um, was having some pain. And I said, hold on real quick. Grab my seven-year-old, had her came. And I said, do you remember how the lady had you pray? She said, yeah. What? She prayed over the woman. The woman said she went from in 10 pain where her whole body was like on fire to a zero instantly as if cold water went upon her. So I love that and you shared cool. about being seven because I think sometimes people discount out the children. They do. And they and, don't realize And yet they have that, a pure heart. Amen. They don't realize that they can receive the Lord with the childlike faith that's talked about 
in the Bible, and that happened to you, which it is did. love. I didn't go into ministry right away, but uh, <laughs> not at seven. But that's right, not at seven. But um, so uh, you know, getting back to, we went home that night, and I was on fire. I was, I was really happy. Did anybody else in your family get on fire, or is it just you? Yeah, remember, I had only gone to church with my oldest sister, and she okay. was only allowed to go. I'm not sure exactly what her story was, so I don't want to really. Yeah, you know, was did she have to beg my dad to go? Because my dad was very much against God, against church, against everything, very much. And he was an alcoholic at the time too. But I'll let him tell his own story when he, when it's time. I'm sure maybe yeah. one day he'll be, <laughs> you know. But um, so I went home and I'm happy. You know, I'm a little seven year old. I just okay. Oh, so you know stuff. what? We're gonna have to pause at home really quick. Uh huh. We're gonna take a commercial break and we'll be right back. So stay tuned. We'll be back in the home in a second. <laughs> Did you know that most skincare products today have low quality ingredients that can end up doing more harm than good? Sofiel's pure, natural ingredients hydrate, exfoliate, and nourish your skin. Most people see results in one application. Our patented skincare formula contains only the highest quality, natural, plant-based ingredients so pure you can eat them. Your skin deserves the best. Go to shopsofiel.com and use code SOUL20 to save 20%. Get started today. Hey friends, we are back with Lorena and she was taking us into a moment after she was at church, seven years old, not only um, the experiencing church, but experiencing the Holy Spirit coming upon her, praying in tongues and you think you fell down even in the spirit. And then you said you went back home and what happened next? Well, um, I was very happy after the experience. Yeah, obviously. And yeah. anyone who has received the Holy Spirit and, and the real is they, they're they just different. And you're yeah. on top of the world. Yeah. And so I came home and I started telling everybody. So, oh, yeah, I started speaking in this, this strange language and I fell down and all this, you know, it was all. The, and my dad said, what? You know, and, and he was very angry and um, was we were forbidden to go back to church. So my sister for years was angry with me as a child um, that she couldn't go back. She's only like uh, three years older than me, but at the same time, this the, I'm pretty sure it's the lady that led me to the Holy Spirit that was bringing my sister to church. Mm -hmm. And so we, were, we weren't allowed to go to church anymore. So from then on, I didn't speak about it oh, at, at all. Wow. And it was years later that my mom ended up receiving um, the Lord. And then she was just on fire and, and didn't care what my dad did. She'd run his friends away with a broom. And <laughs> it was quite interesting. She ran one away with a broom? Well, my, my dad had a lot of his friends over because he was he was a drinker. So yeah. Um, and, and they were not silent about how they felt about my mom being saved. So oh, wow. my mom <laughs> ran them off, with ran the them off with a broom and stuff Dang, like that. Mom. So yeah, she, wow. was, she was pretty serious about her faith. Cause and she Lord started taking you guys like to church once she was on fire? Or um, not well, by the time my mom did, I was a teenager and in pretty much rebellion. <laughs> so Aww. I had, you know, even though I continued to talk to my father, um, I was, you know, it all had a lot to do with a lot of the life issues that were going on and yeah. stuff like that. But um, I was had become very angry, you know, with a lot of the things that were happening in my life. So yeah. it was more of a, you know, me and daddy on our own, <laughs> you know, I, I don't need all that and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, but when I was 18, I had, we had finally um, come back. We were living in Texas for a while, but we had finally come back. My parents were in California. And I got to pause really quick. So, you know, you're this kid, you have this beautiful experience. All you wanted was to share with everybody else. And then all these years pass, and then your mom has the beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. But now you're not in a place to receive no, it. No, I was not. I was, well, I was also angry at my parents for a lot of the things that we had gone through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it wasn't their fault. I mean, now that you know that it's generational. I mean, there's no really one person that is at fault. Either. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then you're 18. And so I'm 18. And I remember walking down the street. And it was kind of funny because... I had my hands like this. and You can check out the rest of this interview right here or by going to BibleRevival.tv. And if this show has blessed you, you can help us bless others by partnering with us for as little as $20 a month and help us to expand the reach of this show. We'd also like to invite you to join our Kingdom Discipleship Program, where you have an opportunity to get on weekly Bible Zoom calls with us and people around the world to deep dive into His Word. And you can check all that out at BibleRevival.tv. I'll see you next time, my friend. What?